What's up all you beautiful, sexy, muscle-bound... For... What's up all you beautiful, gorgeous, sexy bastards out there? This is Coach Rob and I just wanted to sit down and do a very, very quick video. Um, earlier today, I posted this video. And as I often do, promptly uploaded it to various platforms of my social media. Uh, Instagram, my ketogenic bodybuilding Facebook group, you know, just having a little bit of fun, right? And, uh, you know, as also often occurs, uh, there was a comment made in one of these social media platforms regarding said post uh, telling me that carbohydrates, apparently they saw the cream of rice box, that carbohydrates was absolutely not necessary and that I should consider becoming fat adapted. I had a little bit of fun with that comment, explaining, you know, that uh, I didn't know much about this stuff and I was kind of new to it, just having a little bit of fun with some sarcasm. And I don't mean any disrespect, I, I greatly welcome this comment and I'm sure the gentleman who posted this comment is a great dude. And I welcome more and I welcome the discourse. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to have some fun and to sort of reiterate my position that I have towards myself and many, not all, everybody keep your freaking panties unbunched, clients. And uh, that is the use of carbohydrates for me around training. And I think for the individual who is not completely metabolically fucking broken, not morbidly obese, not battling issues uh, in that realm, that if you're simply a metabolically fit, active, strong, healthy individual that likes to train hard in the gym, work their ass off, you're aspiring to achieve a certain aesthetic or a certain strength goal or a certain performance goal, or you just want to be freaking jacked. There is absolutely nothing wrong with utilizing a structured small amount of carbohydrates at the right time in the right quantities for you around training. For some, around training may be pre-workout. For some, it may be post-workout. For some, it may be pre and post-workout. And it, it depends on the individual. Now, when I post things like this, or I say things like this, all anybody hears is the C word. Why is this guy who coaches Hard training athletes, hardcore lifters, people who are really trying to achieve a massive aesthetic result, and he does it using ketogenic diets, carnivore diets, low carb diets, hell, I'll, paleo diets, whatever. Why is he talking about carbohydrates? Well, I'm not necessarily talking about carbohydrates. The post was, these are the tools that I use to do work, namely, a chest workout that I engaged in today. So prior to that chest workout, I had one serving, a quarter cup of cream of rice, which is 35 grams of carbohydrate. I had that with a scoop of animal whey protein, which I'm a big fan of. There was no fat, so anybody who wants to bring up the Randall cycle would be speaking out of context because the Randall cycle is not activated because you don't have carbohydrate and fat competing with one another. So I take this 35 gram serving 
uh, of carbohydrates from the cream of rice about 35, 40 minutes prior to a very difficult, high intensity chest session. I'm a 205 pound male that has, you know, a, a good amount of muscle, lean, metabolically active muscle, and fairly low body fat. I'm also not a metabolic train wreck. And speaking of fat adaptation, I've been one fat adapted mother for a long time. My metabolic flexibility is like a yoga instructor, okay? It's, in, it's insane. I can switch in and out no problem, and provided I choose the right carbohydrates in the right amount, timed properly around my hard training efforts, there is no net negative that can come from the ingestion of these carbohydrates. I use them for the inten intense muscular contractions that, I, that occur during my heavy strength training, hypertrophy driven, high intensity, bodybuilding style workouts. And at the conclusion of that workout, I would uh, be willing to bet that those carbohydrates have been soaked up, converted to glycogen, used within the muscle to generate energy and are gone. And then post-workout, I usually just have a serving of protein because I just like to do that. And then the remainder of the day, all of my meals are meat. <laughs> you know, almost, almost, prime, almost 100%. Meat, eggs, fish, chicken, poultry, pork, whatever. At the end of the day, that 35 grams of carbohydrate is generally, typically, the only 35 grams of carbohydrate, the only carbohydrates, period, that I have throughout the entire day, except for the little, you know, sprinkle here and there that naturally occur in some of the other animal-based foods that I consume. So, for me, a long-time, you know, weightlifter, bodybuilder, you know, strength training, enthusiast that also coaches people of that particular ilk, this particular methodology works rather well. There are other benefits to doing this as well if you are of the sort that can tolerate certain carbohydrates around your training. That, those carbohydrates provided, you know, uh, excuse me, coupled with sodium, create a ridiculous freaking pump during training. And who doesn't like a good pump when you're training? right? Uh, and once again, it allows me to engage in super high intensity training. And uh, also it bumps me out of ketosis, which I personally don't like to be in ketosis super long term. I like to bump out. Uh, and then I easily shift right back in later on. And uh, I also like having the insulin bump that I get from the ingest ingestion of those carbohydrates because I don't have an issue with insulin. I'm not insulin resistant. I'm extremely insulin sensitive. And I like to have a bump in insulin throughout the day because insulin is, as we know, a storage hormone. It's also anabolic. Wait, wait. So with insulin, it's not how much. You don't want a, a tidal wave of insulin constantly throughout the day. We know clearly that that is not a good thing. But it's also not necessarily a good thing to the hard training athlete to restrict it completely. So once again, as with many things, including carbohydrate, It's not how much or how little, but it's about finding the precise amount required to generate the outcome based on whatever your goals are. 
So I have to repeat this sermon two or three times a year, maybe more. And that's okay, because some people are new to my Facebook group or my social media or my YouTube presence. Some people benefit greatly from my ideology and methodology of hard training combined with my hybrid ketogenic bodybuilding nutrition protocol. And I still call it that. I mean, you could make an argument that it's even more a hybrid carnivore bodybuilding protocol now. It's, it's, it's evolved over the years. My ingestion of vegetable matter is scant at best. It's only on rare occasions that I have vegetables, and it's only the two or three that I happen to really enjoy when they occasionally land on my plate at dinner when my wife cooks them. So once again, the overall, you know, gross volume of vegetable matter that I consume over the course of any given week is extremely minimal, if sometimes zero. So everybody, once again, pull your panties out of your butt. For many, and I have proven this over and over and over and over again, a small amount of calculated carbohydrate around training can be very beneficial, it can be optimal, and it can be very, very preferred for that particular athlete, lifter, whatever. For some, it may not be for you. For some, it may be the missing piece of the puzzle. I have had clients who went months without any carbohydrate and ate very clean and it just didn't work well for them. And when I added a small amount of carbohydrate around training and the occasional very structured refeed, those particular clients flourished. I've also had clients that could not tolerate any carbohydrate and did better when we just excluded it altogether. But if I'm being very honest with you, I've had more people than not do better with that slight nod of introducing a small amount of carbohydrate at the right time and the right amounts from the right variety of carbohydrates. For me, for those who appear to be very concerned with me, I do very well on rice-based carbohydrates. White rice, cream of rice, rice cakes. I get no ill effect for them whatsoever. I feel great when I ingest them. I have no uh, gastrointestinal upset. I have no gut distress. I don't have an energy crash. I feel amazing. I work out great on them and I have no ill effects. I don't do so well on pasta. I don't do so well on breads. But rice and potatoes, no issue whatsoever. I can take a small amount of those two particular carbohydrates and be absolutely fine, if not even optimized when I include the right amount around my training and the well-structured occasional refeed. So, I am, once again, I appreciate the comment and it's great because it opens dialogue and it makes this, you know, my, my group and the people who gravitate towards the content that I provide, it makes it non-dogmatic. Everybody's welcome. There, there are nuances to this and it differs from individual to individual. And I've said this many, many times, there are certain things under this umbrella that we can all agree on. You never need to ingest seed oils, ever. There's never going to be a use for that machine lubricant. We can all agree on that. We can all agree that excess carbohydrates, processed foods, things of that nature is never a good idea. But I'm not going to be that guy that says you should only eat steak and salt and water for the rest of your life because I'm sorry, I feel like I would be doing you all an injustice if I did that. There are some who may flourish on that or require that 
based on their lifestyle up to this point, and they need that particular nutritional intervention to flourish and thrive and be their best. Not all of us are that person. If you're that person and you're succeeding on that, I congratulate you and I encourage you to continue to do that. But some of you out there may be thinking, I'm trying this hardcore, super low or no carb approach, and I feel like deep down in my heart and soul, something is a bit amiss, and though it's working okay, maybe it's not optimal, there are other options that you may want to entertain. And that's what I do. So again, I just wanted to throw that out there. Make sure everybody understands my position, that I'm not just some amateur doing this willy-nilly. This is a willy-nilly. Did I just say willy-nilly? <sighs> Sorry about that. Anyway, um, so anyway, no, uh, it's, you know, I, I've been in the game a while, and uh, I've experimented at every level, and once again, to, to keep beating this poor, <laughs> long-dead horse, I've been experimenting and operating deep in the trenches, working with thousands and thousands of people, including myself at a very high level, five, six days a week for 30 years. You'll learn a thing or two. And my position has always been, I'm going to do and I'm going to recommend what I believe is gonna be optimum and optimal for the client, the individual, the person, not just what gets me clicks and follows and likes. And that'll always be me. So if you like that sort of shit, and that's your particular brand of whiskey, then I appreciate you being here and I continue to encourage you to keep bringing that dialogue forward. And I can't thank you enough for following along all of my shenanigans. But uh, that's all I have to say today. I just wanted to make that clear. Maybe it'll create a dialogue. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. But uh, hey, you know, I've got a client to get to and the rest of my day to bang out. I hope you guys have a fantastic freaking day and uh, stick around. Hit the subscri subscribe button if you're watching this on my YouTube and help me get that message out to more individuals and help support the channel and what we're doing over here. Have a great day.